Hello, good morning everyone, which Wong here. Welcome back to the channel. On this channel, we have reviewed quite a few Makey lenses in the past, and today we are going to review another lens from Makey. It is the Makey 8mm f2.8 lens. It is a wide-angle lens or ultra-wide-angle lens, and it's not a fisheye lens. This lens is specially designed for micro four-thirds cameras. Before we start, a quick disclaimer. Makey sent me this sample for this review, but the only thing that I agree to do is to add a purchase link to their website in the video description below. So anyway, I will share with you all the pros and cons I found about this lens in this review. Let's start by talk about the design and build quality of this lens first. As I mentioned before, this is a lens that is specially designed for micro four first cameras, which I really appreciate as not many companies specially design lenses only for micro four first cameras. Most companies, they just release their APS-C lenses for the micro four first camera as well. But having said that, the size of this lens is quite a bit bigger than I expected. By no means it's a huge lens and it feels quite okay with the GH6 but it's definitely a bit bigger than the average Michael Forford lenses. The weight of this lens is 480 grams so it's also not light at all. More than double the weight of the lower 7.5mm f2 or the Leica 9mm f1.7 lens which I have both recently reviewed on this channel. So we have a look in this review and see if there is any reason behind the larger size and weight of this lens. When I remove this lens from the box, one thing I notice immediately is the new design of this lens. I've reviewed many Makey lenses in the past, while the build quality of those lenses are all quite solid, but the aesthetic design were all pretty average. However, with this new Makey 8mm f2.8 lens, it looks much better than all the previous Makey lenses I have reviewed. It still has the red ring at the front, which is kind of like a Makey signature look, but overall the lens looks so much more premium and also feel a lot more premium as well. The lens is made of metal, feels very solid, and it is a completely mechanical lens with no autofocus or any electronic features. I really like the focus ring. It is very smooth and the resistance feels just about perfect to me. The pattern on the metal focus ring also make it very easy to grip. The focus flow is just a bit over 90 degrees. There is a de-click the aperture ring at the back which is also very smooth and the resistance is about the same as the focus ring so it's not very tight or very loose. So even though I'm not a big fan of the click the aperture ring, I do still really enjoy adjusting the focus and aperture on this Makey lens. The lens has an integrated metal lens hood which has a 77mm front filter thread. When you unmount the lens from the body, usually after you click the release button on the camera, you can only rotate the lens in one direction to remove the lens from the body. But with this Makey lens, you could actually rotate it in both directions and if you rotate it in the wrong direction, the lens is now kind of trapped. Well, it's not really trapped it and it's not really the end of the world because you could still keep rotating it and eventually you can still remove the lens from the body. If you only shoot with Michael Forford's cameras, this probably won't be a problem at all, you may never even notice it as muscle memory would guide you to rotate the lens in the right direction every time when you try to remove the lens from the body. But if you are someone like me who do switch between many different camera systems, that is best to be a bit more careful. The minimum focus distance of this lens is approximately 25cm or 10 inches, which is not bad. But because it is a wide angle lens, so the maximum magnification ratio is just about average, probably around 0 0.1 time equivalent or so by looking at this photo that are shot at the minimum focus distance. Image sharpness seems okay at f2.8, and because of the 8mm focal length and its uh, 
lens that is designed for micro four foot cameras. The depth of field is not super narrow even when shooting at the minimum focus distance at f2.8. So you don't need to stop down the lens too much if you just need your foreground object in focus. On the flip side, you can't really dissolve the background too much. So I won't talk about bokeh in this review. Now let's have a look at the image sharpness. At f2.8, the center looks quite good, but if you stop down to f4, you can see some good improvement in terms of center sharpness. Stopping down to f5.6 and f8, there isn't any noticeable difference. Once you stop down the lens to f11, direction was starting to make the image look a little bit softer. So I wouldn't really stop past f8 if I want to have the best image sharpness, at least if I'm shooting with the GH6 which has the 25 megapixel sensor. If you now look at the corner, at f2.8, the corner is soft and also the contrast is a bit low as well. If you stop down the lens, the corner would gradually become sharper. And if I focus at the corner of the photo instead of the center, I would get slightly sharper corner as well. The sharpest corner is at around f11 if you focus at the center or f8 if you focus at the corner of the photo. For a lens that has 8mm focal length and 109 degree field of view, it has reasonably good distortion control. While sometimes I can see a small amount of distortion, overall it is still very well controlled. Now let's have a look at the lens vignetting performance. At f2.8, there is already quite minimal amount of vignetting. There's some graduate light fall off from the center to the edge, but not very serious at all. Once I stop down the lens to f4, then vignetting already become very minor and it remains like that when I stop down the lens more. So I guess this is probably one of the benefit of the larger size of the lens. Both the Lauer 7.5mm and the Leica 9mm has very noticeable vignetting even when I stop down those lenses quite a bit. I was checking the photos that I shot with this lens on a bright sunny day and when I zoom into some high contrast area, I was a bit surprised because I was really expecting to see a bit of color fringing but I don't really see anything that is very noticeable. I don't see any nasty purple or color fringing at all from all these photos. I've mentioned quite a few times on this channel before, lens flare is usually one of the biggest weakness with a lot of lenses from the Chinese optics manufacturers. With the previous Meiji lens that I've reviewed on this channel, some has pretty average lens flare control. So I was not too sure what I should expect this time with this new Meiji 8mm lens. So lens flare was the first thing I test when I received this lens as a wide angle lens could suffer from lens flare quite easily. Luckily, I can tell you this Meiji 8mm f2.8 lens has pretty decent lens flare performance. When shooting at the maximum aperture f2.8 and shooting directly into the sun, there is only small amount of lens flare. Contrast remains very good as well. I see a small amount of ghosting, but nothing really terrible. When stop down the lens to the minimum aperture, there's more ghosting, which is expected, but overall the lens flare performance is still pretty good. I do notice when there is a strong light source that is just outside the frame in front of the camera, there could be a bit of ghosting. But overall, as a budget wide angle lens, I'm pretty happy with this Meiji lens lens flare performance. 10 point sun stars is my favorite sun stars and this is exactly what this Meiji 8mm f2.8 lens gives me when I stop down the lens. Even at f4, I can already see a bit of sun stars in the photo and it gets sharper as I stop down the lens. Interestingly, the sharpest and the longest sun stars is actually at f8, not the minimum aperture. When I stop down the lens past f8, the sun stars do not look that sharp and clean anymore. So I would suggest you to shoot at f8 if you want the nice and sharpest sun stars from this Meiji lens. At the maximum aperture f2.8, there is a small amount of comma near the edge of the photo. I won't say the comma is very serious and is really only noticeable when I zoom in the photo at 200% zoom. 
stop down to F4, it improved a bit, and at F5.6, then comma is not really that noticeable anymore. If you need a wide angle lens for videography, I think you will like this Makey lens. Firstly, you have the very nice focus and also the clicked aperture ring, which give you very smooth control of the lens. And I was really surprised when I did the focus briefing test, as I found the lens only has very tiny amount of focus briefing, even when I did the test from the minimum focus distance 0.25 and change it all the way to infinity, there's still very minimal amount of focus briefing. And if I do the normal one meter to infinity distance focus briefing test, then there's virtually no focus briefing. If you want to do a bit of rocking, this lens could work quite well as well. The very wide field of view make it easy to shoot the rocking style footage, and you don't have to hold the camera too far away from yourself, so it's easier to hold the camera for longer time. Having said that, this lens is also not the lightest Michael Forford lens, but I find it's still okay even when I was shooting this with the GH6, which is also not a light camera at all. The other thing you have to watch out is the warping effect near the edge of the frame when you're using with a camera that has IBIS. This is not really caused by the lens itself, but it's just something that would happen if you use the IBIS try to stabilize a wide angle lens when the camera can shake quite a bit. So this Makey 8mm f2.8 lens would also have this problem when you use it for vlogging. It's been almost two years since I last reviewed a Makey lens, so I was really excited to check out this new Makey lens. It's a bit like visiting an old friend that I haven't made for a while. There are definitely quite a few surprises, but there are also things I want to see more from Makey in the future. On the positive side, I really love the new design of the lens. It looks and feels more premium, and it is very solid. It's definitely a big step up compared to the Makey lens that I've reviewed in the past. Image quality wise, it is pretty good overall. Lens sphere control is better than the previous Makey lens, and it also has decent vignetting, chromatic aberration, and distortion control. The lens is also very suitable for videography as well. Now, the negative side, I think is mostly to do with the size of the lens. Since this lens is specially designed for Michael Forford's cameras, I really wish the size of this lens is a little bit smaller. It feels okay when I use it with this GH6 and it probably would feel the same if I use it on most other medium to large size Michael Forford cameras. But if I use it with one of the smaller Michael Forford's cameras, it probably would not feel very balanced. And I also thought the image sharpness could be a little bit better. While the center sharpness is not bad, I think the corner sharpness could be a little bit better, especially considering the large size of the lens. But anyway, I'm glad to see Makey has made some good improvements to this lens in quite a few areas. And if you have any question about this lens, please feel free to drop a comment below. If you found this review useful, please give it a thumbs up to support me.